started. I, I apologize. I I got over anxious and I didn't. This is a lesson to pay attention when the leader makes announcements instead of thinking that, oh, we're out till two instead of out for five minutes. So thanks for being here. Uh, boy, I know we're holding you up in tax, Mr. Chairman, so we will do our best, but we've got a somewhat minor slash heavy lift here to get taken care of. So um, we want to finish up on... Um, Twenty, yeah, which one? Twenty. Well, yes. Twenty five forty three, which is one that we put in with the first offer, and we have just again another cleanup language as we look at this. And so, uh, uh, Vice Chair Mosier, would you explain this conceptual amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, on the the language that was written out for me under a the brand renewal fee semicolon and then the word and is there i'd like to replace it with or and then under b the total of the brand application fee and registration fee shall not exceed one hundred dollars exceed one hundred dollars right. okay so Mr. Chairman, we've got a balloon, and Revisor Lawrence, you said that it's somewhere. Can you can you direct us where uh, Vice Chair is referencing? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I believe this is on the balloon that the Senate offered yesterday. Uh, there is the large box, the big one. It says following exceed $100 colon at the end of that capital A it says and and I believe she is trying or suggesting to change that to an or yes you can explain why please it was on advice from a legal person that I trust and she said um um, having an and after the brand renewal fee leaves the door open for an argument that the overall total is limited to $100 more than she would like. Okay, I'm still not on the same page. So where would the, you would strike the and in the... Just, just in the A in the, this box. Okay. Strike and and put or. What line is that? Uh, line uh, 23 or 24 or 25, where all those arrows are okay. <laughs> on page two. Yes, the A, B is inserted on line 24. So could you read it? As I understand it, it would say the brand renewal fee or the total of the application fee and, and registration, registration fee. fee. So this is clarifying. It's not okay. It's not it's changing. No, it's just yes. clarifying. Our our Those... concern was that the application fee could be up to a hundred, and that's not okay. No, okay, no, that's so, not the case at all. And if I remember right, Mr. Chairman, the vice chair mentioned the striking and putting or, and then there was was there another change? or the total of the brand application fee yeah, total and the registration fee should not exceed. In no case shall either the brand renewal fee or the total of the brand application fee and the registration fee exceed $100. So or is the only change. And the renewal is one, is one and the rest of it is another. Neither one, did both of them have a cap in $100 yeah. of those two. So, I, I, all right, that, I, that's fine if it's clarifying language. That's, still, that's what's still all same is. intent. Any questions from people? Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go to um, then kind of the underlying bill, which is 2047. And this goes back to, um, and, and I, do, I want to have a little discussion, and, and we have some folks here in the, in the, uh, in the crowd that, that we may want to talk about and if we feel this is necessary this goes on line 18 where we added air, the definition you said aircraft means the same as defined and 
reporting CFR 1.1 is effect July 1. The aerial applicators have a concern that they they may want to be um, granted um, not the immu is not the right word. What I'm wanting to use ex excluded from this. So, Revisor Hamilton, if you could address this a little bit, then I may I want to have Mr. Hancock talk just a little bit, or should I have Mr. Hancock talk first? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. That's fine. Okay. So the amendment and then the, the federal, federal regulations, what we learned yesterday, that's also important in these discussions to have maybe that reference that we're talking about. So Kyle, if you just can you give a brief explanation, I guess, from from your from your standpoint thank you mr chairman members of the committee um well first of all this uh also includes what we discussed yesterday about adding in uh, a definition of aircraft and tying that to a, a, a definition in federal regulation um and the, the proposed language we saw yesterday had that language kind of interspersed throughout the bill, uh, but we cleaned that up and just put it in the existing definition section. Uh, and then the addition for today is an exemption from the definition of aircraft to say that it does not include any agricultural aircraft operation conducted in accordance with um, 14 CFR section 137. Uh, as an effect July 1, 2024. And I've, I've included copies of those federal regulations for you to review. Um, but any additional questions, I would defer to stakeholders of the chairman. Okay. Speaking of that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to bring in uh, for a couple of maybe looking at this. So Steve Hancock from the Aero Applicators, again, Aero Applicators, if you talk just briefly kind of, of why you have this concern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Steve Hitchcock for the Kansas Agricultural Aviation Association. Uh, our concern is that uh, you have in front of you the uh, FAA uh, Part 137 uh, regs. Part 137.49 is, is the key one. Uh, aerial applicators uh, under Part 137 have restrictions that don't apply to Part 91 general aviation uh, about uh, crossing over congested areas and things like that, but they do have this one area that they are given some leeway that is based on safe operation that says that when they are operating in conducting the business that they're in of applying chemicals, fertilizer, whatever, uh, then during that they can operate outside of the Part 91 restrictions on uh, altitude above the ground uh, and, and things like that. Uh, and, and it says below 500 feet or closer than 500 feet to persons, vessels, vehicles, and structures if the operations are conducted without creating a hazard to persons or property on the surface. So from a federal standpoint, that's what covers them. And our concern is that the way the proposed statute is written is we may be setting up a, a little bit of confusion or conflict between the federal regs and state law, uh, on uh, particularly on animal facility, on on the crop research facilities. Maybe uh, the potential, if if there's not a clear delineation of where those are and their boundaries, there might be some problem. But with animal facility, and it, it says any vehicle, building, structure, research facility, or premises where an animal is kept. If you are spraying cerisa in the Flint Hills, 
the premises of an animal facility might be the half section pasture where 90 days of, of uh, cattle feeding is going on. And so we're looking at that and I don't think there is, I, I think this is to address the problem of, of activism in trespassing using drones to film things or to in other ways impede what's going on in a facility. Uh, the legacy agricultural support of aerial application I don't think is the target. I think it's collateral damage. Uh, what we would say is the FAA Part 137 addresses that and there's no need for a potentially uh, inconsistent address from the state side. But uh, sorry, I went so long. That's, that's fine. A uh, couple questions. So first, uh, Vice Chair Mosier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we discussed this this morning mm -hmm. and I brought up to you that the um, aerial applicators are doing their job, but they must do it without creating a hazard to persons or property below them on the surface. So what happens if that happens? What happens if they end up going over a feedlot in their turn and they're below and the cattle get spooked? Who's responsible then? That applicator, that company, uh, you know, if there's damages. Mr. Well, Chairman, if I may yes. interrupt just a moment, I apologize, but the Senate is on final okay. action, so we need to run to the third floor we'll recess. for a little bit. And, Thank you. Uh, I for your understanding, we'll recess. Okay. Thank you. Stand by, we'll recess till uh, we start talking again.
They came right back too. Okay, we will continue on. And uh, are you okay with your answer? Did you, are you okay with what Steve gave you? I hadn't talked to him since we recently. No, I mean, but when he was up here giving the, the did he answer your question? No, here? Okay. Oh, that's right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to bring Mr. I always get your name wrong. Hickok, rather than Hancock. I don't know what that was. So, okay. If you want to kind of re-ask your question briefly and then kind of give a brief answer. And if you all have a question, if not, then we'll, we'll move on. So. so the aerial applicators, you know, are supposed to do their job professionally, which they do, without creating a hazard to persons or property on the surface. What happens if there is a problem on the surface? Sorry about that. Did you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, under that would be uh, well for for in Kansas the FISDO, which is an acronym for the Federal Aviation Facility at Kansas City or Wichita, is the place that is notified for any aviation related activity that is seen as as non compliant, whether it's Part ninety one, Part one thirty seven. Uh, they're trying to ramp up with with drone. Uh, things also, but it would be a it would be an FAA violation, is what it would be, uh, if if they were non-compliant with the with their mandate. Okay. Shannon, any questions on this one? What's that? No, I don't know. If you if you have none, okay. Thanks, Steve. Also, want to bring in Aaron Palka, Kansas Livestock Association. Um, maybe some concerns or kind of what your take is on this possible amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I would say one of the concern is this is after hearings in both chambers passing language, passing both chambers this is the first we've heard the concern. And so we're doing this a little bit from the fly. Uh, I think the concern we have is inserting a blanket exemption I think sends maybe the wrong message because I think as Mr. Hitchcock alluded to, um, his members really shouldn't be flying over dairies and feed yards right now. Um, and certainly if they're flying at low altitudes and we have pen riders or other employees and vicinity of a lot of a uh, large number of cattle that poses uh, some uh, safety risks to the, to the workers. And so I, I think there's a way maybe if they're uh, to, work through this uh, so that we're not going over the facilities and they can do what they need in pastures. But I don't think this gets it done. And um, I, I don't want to risk endangering the bill that's passed by large more margins in both chambers. So any questions for Aaron? All right. Thank you. Any other, any other concerns? Well, from a concern standpoint, I guess I'm going to have to agree with Mr. How he pronounced his last name, not Hitchcock, the other guy, Pep. <laughs> if, if they had simple, easy names like Peck, we'd be much better off. But, or, or Ken. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know that I'm ready at this point to allow aircraft. I, I guess I'm just not certain, Mr. Chairman, that the guardrails are there to make certain that we don't have a rogue sprayer fly over some of our feedlots and other ag. Uh, and I understand the concern, but uh, pretty major change that was just dropped on us. Do uh, you guys have a question? Do, do, do we need a one minute conference or where we're, do you have does Senate have a position on this? I'm sorry, I did not hear what you said. I said, do we need to like a one minute conference to, to and then see where your position, where our position is on this, to add it or not? Absolutely, I, I need a little more time to digest or potentially more information on this particular amendment. Okay, um, I'd like to go ahead and do that now before we move forward to make sure that we've got a lot of things kind of flying around, and I think what's coming up needs needs good attention. So. Can we can we just stay in the in the room here for just what five minutes or how long? That would be a discussion that we can kind of have right here among you know 
off mic and then come right back, say for five minutes. We can start okay. we start with that. Okay. If the side needs additional time, we okay. can communicate. Very good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. is that uh, we just 
are uncomfortable, don't have adequate information. It's going to be a short window. The legislation does not take effect until statute book, which is July 1. So our position will be we will not accept the amendment at this time and urge interested parties, if it is an issue, to bring it early next session. Mr. Chairman, we concur. Okay. So we still need to accept this yeah, sure. amendment, don't we, or did we do that yesterday? Uh, I'm going to call uh, Reviser Hamilton because maybe before we move on, this might be a good time to review and to make sure that we're all on the same page with all these amendments with the bills that are in there right now. Okay. Uh, very good, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I just wanted to clarify really quickly with the rejection of the previous amendment, does that include both paragraphs or just the, the additional language that was added today? I think the additional language that was added today. Okay. The so Senate still, def still retaining the definition of aircraft. Yes. That from, would still be added. The Senate yesterday. Yes. We, I think we agree to leave that in. Okay. Just one moment. Mr. Chairman, what I'm looking for is when we go through these amendments, I believe we've all agreed to just want to make sure then and, and if you concur that that these small technical amendments we have made on these bills, if we agree, then then that will be that will be in there and then we can move move forward. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so first, uh, the the conference had agreed to include the contents of HB twenty eight hundred, the conservation districts bill. Um, second, uh, to add in the contents of HB 2543, the branding bill, along with the amendment concerning the fee caps and uh, replacing that and with an or that we just discussed, and then adding in the contents of HB 2047, and that's the animal facilities trespass bill that we just discussed, including the definition of aircraft. And then there had been a discussion about including the contents of HB 2608, that's the poultry bill, and there had been an amendment offered about uh, uh, re-adding uh, limited rules and regs authority to the commissioner uh, to set fee schedules. And I wanted to confirm that change. On the amendment on 2608, if I could either get our reviser or Mr. Chairman, if you would be willing to just clarify, because I believe that was a House offered yes. amendment. Okay. What, what happened on the floor, there was an amendment um, that um, basically stripped uh, the rules and regs out. And so what that did, though, is it, is it made it to where the department could not lower the fees. The fee, there was no adjustment there. So what we're wanting to do is the department has said we have this ability, then we will lower the fees rather than starting them out at the max cap. And so that's, that's why I think it was a good intention. I think, you know, much like wanting to save a dollar or two, many folks want to get a hold of, the rules and regs and not have others other than legislators determine what our policy should be. And so, but I think this may have been the wrong vehicle to start that mission. So that that's why we would like to include that back in. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, go ahead. So that would be part of 2608 that clarifying or uh, that's correct reinserting language or for rule and reg authority that's it then kyle we're, we're caught up yes. okay and so mr chairman we have just a very few minutes because the i'm going to call her the vice chair because she's sitting in for the vice chair she's also a chair of a committee she has conference at 11:45. okay 
which it makes it challenging. But I would like for us to bring into the discussion Senate substitute for House Bill 2168, or I guess it's not Senate substitute, it's House substitute, but it's a substitute for House Bill 2168. And there have been brought to my attention some controversy or language in statute that needs to be clarified to basically make certain they match up. So I do have a balloon that has been drawn and Reviser Lawrence, I think, is the one that has the balloon. And I'm going to ask her once it's distributed to go over the language in the balloon. And then I'll be happy to make some additional comments. She did say she phoned a friend just in case she needs some assistance. Mr. Chairman, what, what is in the schedule this afternoon? We all go back in at two. I'm guessing with this, if you if we need to break once this has begun, um, we may just need to recess and come back later today. I thought if potentially we could get together again before we go back on the floor, depending be on fun. the schedule of the rest of us that are in conference. That's fine. What have this room to how long? We have the room till noon. We'll see if we can pay our fee and stay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead then and, and get started. And then we'll break here in just a little bit because I know we have w w some conferees also to have more discussion after yours. So go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lawrence, if you would go over the balloon that has been drafted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am going to defer to Natalie right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Natalie Scott from the Revisor's Office. I um, staff corrections and judiciary, so I do a little bit more of the criminal work. Um, so essentially what this balloon um, would do is bring in KSA 23908 into um, the bill here. And just as a reminder, that's the section in the Industrial Hemp Act that talks about the unlawful hemp products and the penalties. <laughs> the uh, penalty is for uh, violating the uh, Industrial Hemp Act. And um, so these, you'll see in the red and blue down there in subsection C1, this balloon would um, make changes to the penalty provisions under current law. A first conviction for violation of the act is a class A non-person misdemeanor and a second or subsequent conviction is a severity level nine non-person felony. Um, this bill would separate the criminal penalties based on the THC concentration. So if you had a violation of the act uh, that related to a hemp product, that's material containing a concentration of less than 1%, then these current law penalties would apply to that violation. Um, but violation, you'll see in paragraph two, violation of a section with respect to a hemp product containing more than 1.0% um, shall be prosecuted under Article 57 of Chapter 21 um, which is the controlled substances crimes in the Kansas criminal code. Um, there's a new subsection D added that provides that prosecution under this section shall not be considered um, to prohibit conduct that's identical to a, um, a violation that would exist in the controlled substances article um, of crimes within the criminal code. And I can take any questions. My understanding is we're moving up the concentration of THC to a stronger penalty. Currently, if it's under one, or is it currently under 3.3? So if it's under 0.3, there's one penalty. And if it's above 0.3, there is another penalty. Um, Mr. Chairman, so in, in order to be counted as one of these hemp products, it's supposed to be 
<clears throat> under a 0.3% THC concentration. So if you had a violation of this section that involved a hemp product that was 0.4% THC concentration, then this section would still apply to you. These current law penalties that exist, the A and then the 9, because C1 says if it's a hemp product with less than 1% THC. But if you get into the realm where you're over 1% THC and you commit a violation of this act, then what this language is, is doing is directing you to um, essentially distribution of a controlled substance over in the Kansas Criminal Code, which carries um, stiffer penalties. Okay, thank you. And my understanding is that does not happen with regularity at this point, but it potentially could, Mr. Chairman, is the reason I'm bringing this up. Uh, Senator Ware has a question. Go ahead. Thank you all. Um, so how do we know at what level the THC in any given product or substance is? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Ware, it would have to be tested. By... Um, well, if, if you were involving, you know, if there was a criminal prosecution involved, then they would use the labs. There's a few various labs around the state that law enforcement and prosecution use to test controlled substances to see, um, you know, what the controlled substance is and, um, you know, how, how much THC is, is in that controlled substance. Um, can I elaborate or are we just asking questions right now? Okay. Uh, it's my understanding that at least some of the, of the labs that are currently being used to test uh, products, the process of the testing itself almost guarantees a positive result. And I know that seems odd, but that's what I hear from more than one reputable source that because of the heating involved, it, it, create, it, it skews the result. Mr. Chairman, so you're saying that every, every time testing, it's going to be over this percent? Is that what you're saying? The majority, at least, yes. That's what I understand. One product, any, any product, every product now, or any, any, any raw? What, what? Uh, I, I, I'm not positive. I'm not a lab tech so but uh from more than one source i'm hearing that sort of thing that the tests that are available in the state of kansas now are just not very accurate we needed a whole new testing regime for this sort of thing mr chairman can i stand a question so the blue is the new language correct yes okay so okay all right we'll we'll review that um okay anything else mr chairman because i know we don't i don't want uh senator again to miss out on anything i know but she's got to go so well just one comment i would make this raise is in accordance with the 2018 farm and farm bill and usd final rule i do have a question if indeed what senator ware says is that the testing is almost always going to come in above 0.3. What is the current penalty? Is it just the class A? So um, right now, the penalty is for violation of this section. It doesn't matter how much THC is in the product. But with this change, you're setting the cutoff at 1%. So the test would have to come back to be, you know, 0.9% or lower in order to get this class A or severity level nine. If the test came back and showed that the concentration was above 1%, then, you know, the, the intent of this is that you're going to be prosecuted under distribution of a controlled substance. And the penalties for there are higher. They're on the drug felony grid. So um, depending on how um, much substance you have, they're going to range between a severe drug severity level four and one felony, which are the high, you know, one's the highest five is the lowest. So you're going to be on the, the felony end of that. All right. So it's apparent, Mr. Chairman, we're going to need to break to 
gained a little better understanding. Plus, we're got right. members need to be in other locations. Uh, I, I'm suggesting maybe Dana went out to make sure, but right now, plan 115. Does that work? We do have the uh, chair, chair lady again said she has a 130. Or she can at one thirty. She couldn't before one thirty. She has a conference that starts at one thirty. So okay. if we could get together at one thirty, that would give Let's us. Let's plan on one thirty here, but watch your emails. So we'll we'll, we'll recess till one thirty, and right. we'll let you know for sure where it is. Okay, and because we we've got some folks to talk. Okay, we are we are in recess.